Happy Halloween, everyone. Happy Halloween. It is Manifesting with Meg. And today, my special guest is Rektak Ross. She is the young adult thriller writer. And I'm so excited to have her on Halloween. What a great, auspicious occasion with us. Happy Halloween, everybody. I'm wearing my slasher. Can you see it? My slasher jersey that I got. Um, I've got my little scream mask next to me. Oh, wow. What I are you going to be tonight for Halloween? I have a Halloween candle. You know, I'm actually not sure that I'm going out tonight for Halloween, which oh. pains me to say. My stomach's kind of bothering me, so I may stay in. Um, if I go out, I probably will just wear my slasher. Because <laughs> I already, I went all out on Saturday night, so there was like a huge Halloween party in the neighborhood where I live. And I was Poison Ivy. So we all dressed up as DC characters. Nice. Stepson came in town. And so he was Batman. My husband was, I. he was the Flash. I don't, I don't know why he was the Flash. Because, I mean, it's DC, but it's not in the same universe. The rest of us were all Batman universe. Um, and then Derek's friend dressed up as the Joker. But I don't know. My husband really wanted, he has an old Flash costume. Wear. So at least well, I mean, it the same, at least it wasn't Marvel. I guess the question is, how many times a year does he get a chance to wear a Flash costume, Liani? Or should I ask? I never. You I mean, never. This was like the first time I think in ten years. So. That's it's awesome. Good. Well, I'd like to welcome everyone to Manifesting with Meg Conversations with Extraordinary People today. Like I said, I have my special guest, Rectoc Ross also known as Liani Cotter. You just say Liani, yeah, I know. I mean, like, we're friends. You can I know. I, You know, I always want to make sure everyone knows who your <laughs> author name is. So when they're yes, going out that. searching for you, they know who it is. So they're like, who is this that. Liani lady? But this is really cool because it's the last day of Empowered Through Service. It's our October episode of Halloween. I couldn't imagine a better guest for this day. Our episode 120, it is our sixth season um, empowered through purpose. And our theme today is be an example of love and compassion, which I think we definitely need a lot of for sure. And as we all go out and get to be creative tonight with regard to whatever you show up with, you know, yeah. I'd love for you to remember this conversation because we're always a conversation away from extraordinary. It's time to wake up to a universe packed with possibility, whether it be the DC or the Marvel universe in your house <laughs> or others. But it's very exciting when we get to have these kind of conversations. So welcome, yeah. Liani. Hello. Hello again. So no, I'm very excited. I love these. I always feel like these inspire me too. I love all the manifestation. Um, I really believe in that as well. I think that our theme for today is very fun, um, as opposed to like scary, but we can talk about scary as well. Well, I, I, it's you know they say this is the um, the based on the Celtic holiday you know yeah. the, the main and it's always about you know you know guarding away from the bad spirits welcome in the good right. ones so we can have both sides of the coin it's always a good contrast for sure um let me uh, let me introduce everybody a bit to you but before we okay. do so I want everyone to get intentional obviously set your intentions at the end of the show we're going to match those intentions to what Liani has to share with us today but I'm going to give you guys a little preview into this beautiful author Rectoc Ross is the pen name of Liani Kotcher. She's a former trial attorney turned award-winning author and best-selling author at that She's a screenwriter and a producer, and there's more to be said about that. I know it coming down the pike, we're going to see a lot more of you. She's an avid reader since childhood. She writes exactly the kind of books she loves to escape into herself, which is always a beautiful thing, especially on Halloween. Everyone loves a good scare. That is totally up Liani's alley. She writes exciting thrillers with strong female leads, swoon-worthy love, interests, and life-changing moments. Yay. Like we said, manifesting, saving yourself, perhaps, in your books, that's for sure. She yeah. graduated from University of Florida School of Journalism and obtained her Juris Doctorate at the University of Miami School of Law, where I am located. Yay, Miami. Um, she originally is from South Florida, but she splits her time between San Francisco, Los Angeles, now Las Vegas. And with her husband, she has stepkids and wonderful dogs and has such an incredible, you know, life that she's created for herself manifested may i add um she's incredibly well known for the young adult thriller her first book is ski weekend and that's how we got to know each other yep there there it goes and i will 
here, let me put these up because I think it's important for everyone to see the beautiful covers that she gets to talk about today. We have some new ones too. This girl is hot on fire. Let me tell you. Yeah. So there's ski weekend. Here is summer rental. And then her latest and greatest is The Pop Star and the Devil. So these are her amazing books. And and, and like I said, she's probably going to come out with many, many more. She's just writing Frenzy now. And, and, and we'll tell you more about where you can find her later and all the wonderful awards, best book of the year by Cosmopolitan Entertainment Weekly, Parade, Book Riot, Yahoo, all of the above. She's just an amazing writer, and I'm so excited to have her here on Halloween. So how are you doing today? I mean, this is like my Super Bowl, so I'm doing great, except I have a little bit of a stomach ache, which is kind of a bummer on Halloween. So I probably will, I don't know, we have a party to go to, but I'm probably going to lay low and just watch Halloween movies. Oh, well, what, what is your, just so for the audience, what is one of your fan favorite recommendations on this wonderful evening? Oh. Scream? <laughs> it's gonna be Scream. So Scream for sure. So um, when we were actually pitching, so Summer Rental is my second thriller, and we pitched it as Mean Girls Meet Scream, and everyone loved that. So um, I'm gonna go with that. It's always been probably one of my favorite movies. I I love Wes Craven. I was so sad when he died. I actually cried. Um, I just think he's a genius. I grew up watching Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, Freddy Cougar, the original for sure was unbelievably amazing. Um, and then when he can't with Scream, you know, I was like in high school, I'm aging myself, but that's fine. I was in high school. We had never seen like meta horror before for anyone who maybe hasn't seen Scream or isn't familiar with the term meta horror. It's where the characters are actually very aware. So there's rules in a horror movie or rules in a horror book that a lot of people know about if you read the genre. Um, okay, wait, stop. What are yeah. those rules? And Annie's saying, I wrote what did last summer. Yes, give us like one of the rules of the horror genre. Yeah, I mean, so oh, I could talk about this forever. This is like fires me up. Um, so the rules change is the interesting thing. The rules change with time. And I actually just did a screen marathon. My husband wanted to kill me, but I watched <laughs> one through six. So all of the screen movies. Um, and it's really funny because in the most recent one in Scream Six, there's a film professor. And each time they go over the rules in the movie and there are different rules because you're in a different movie. And she says, I thought it was really actually very poignant. She says that you can tell a lot, people think horror is silly or whatever, but you can actually tell a lot about society um, based on the horror that is popular at the time because it follows the rules of society and the moral code of society at that time. Mm -hmm. And so they're constantly changing. So like, um, you know, maybe in the eighties, when I think people were like more prudish or whatever, the rules would be if you drank and they go over this in Scream 1. It's really funny. There's like this whole scene where he stands up and pauses um, the he pauses the movie. The main guy who's like this film guy pauses the movie. And he knows all the rules. And he says, you don't know the rules of four. And he says, you know, number one, don't you? Know, I think it's number one or two. He's like, don't have sex. Don't drink. Um, but that's because in the 80s and the 90s, those are the rules. Nowadays, I think if you watch horror movie, plenty of people are, you know, not virgins and live to see the end of the movie yeah. or they don't drink. But that used to be kind of the old rules. And like I said, they're constantly changing. Um, I would say one rule that usually stays the same is like, if you kill any kind of animal, you're definitely like- yeah, you're not gonna <laughs> Oh, I like, like that no one. No one wants to see someone who's killing puppies or kitties. <laughs> oh no. Like they get to the end. But otherwise I think they're constantly changing, but the old rules definitely used to be, um, you know, don't, don't have sex. Don't, it was like a moral code of society. Don't drink or do drugs. Um, and don't ever say, I'll be right back. Oh, say, I'll be right oh. back. Never going to be right back. And it was so <laughs> fun running so much because I poke a lot of fun at those rules as well. Um, oh, how funny. and the book, I think someone's kind of turns a lot of it's on it on its head, but I did do like a really funny reference to I'll be right back because I just thought that was such an epic line. And such an epic like scene and callback to Scream. Yeah. Um, other than Scream, there's a lot. I mean, I could talk about horror movies forever. There's so many good ones, but definitely Scream. Like I said, I watched all of them. Um, Halloween for sure. I love the first one. I love Halloween H two O, which was the '90s Halloween. Anything in the '90s, like '80s and '90s, is really my absolute favorite. And early 2000s, all the Final Destination movies. I think uh. those are so fun. I just saw a meme this morning of someone put up of um, a picture of a 
a truck with um, logs on the back and all the cars yeah. were on the left. And then they said all the people on the left saw Final Destination. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, with the little, the thing that comes in the app. Yeah. Um, I, uh, and Annie, it's so funny, Annie references, I know you did last summer. That's another one of my absolute favorite favorites. And there's a lot of callbacks in Summer Rental. So I know you did last summer, even the theme is about a death that happened the summer before and it happens, you know, these kids now are going through all this in the new summer. So plot wise, a lot of similarities. Um, I think The Descent is an amazing movie about, it seems like it's about someone getting trapped, a group of girlfriends getting trapped in caves, but it's actually kind of a commentary on grief and how we deal with it. So I love like I love how horror has the ability to talk about these really serious issues and like societal problems and conflicts, but it does it in a really fun way. Um, that's super accessible, but, um, Annie's saying Chucky scares me. Well, it's interesting. I just went to Universal (laughs) Halloween Horror Nights just like two weekends ago, and we went into the Chucky, um, the house, the Chucky haunted house, Uh and I was, I was like, oh my god, like seriously, like little crazy little tiny man with a. I mean, (laughs) if you step back out of a dark room, like literally, this is not a terrifying situation. Run, you know, there's, but if you're like in like a whole like little like corridor with little Chucky coming everywhere at you it's a totally so i always wonder let me back to you like what yeah. truly pulls you toward the hot ho- the horror genre you know why do you love it yeah. So yeah and i would say you know i would say horror slash thriller because i think it's really hard there's like not a there's kind of a gray line between the two you know what one person calls horror someone else calls a thriller yeah. um so i would say i kind of straddle the line between both but for me, both thriller and horror, what I really love about it, and it's the same thing I love about romance, because those are kind of my two favorite, is like thriller, horror, and romance. Um, and I think it's the the high, the incredibly high stakes in both. Mm-hmm. Um, so in horror or thriller, right, it's like either you're going to live or you're going to die. Yeah. Like someone or something or nature or whatever wants you dead. And the whole plot of the book is whether or not you can survive that. So there's no higher stakes as human beings than whether you're going to survive um except for love so i think love is kind of the other really incredibly high stakes thing that experience we go through as human beings i mean there's so many funny expressions that i think even encapsulate love and romance as like a life or death experience you know like my heartbroken you know heart your heart breaks you die right i mean heartbroken that comes from like or i feel like i'm gonna die like yeah heart whatever um a break up it's like you know your body breaking up breaking down um and especially i write ya although i am going to at some point transition to a little bit more adult in my third book but in ya especially with young people the first love is so high stakes no. so life or death um i think i just get really drawn to the high emotions of of those those genres and oh there's always romance in my thriller horror because I love it so much. Well, you know, it's interesting. I'm going to, I'm going to pivot off of that, you know, with today's theme being, be an example of love and compassion, since we're talking yeah. about young, even young love, certainly. And the quote is by Brian Weiss. And it goes like this, our civilized culture is failing us. And to change things, we have to start with our children showing them the importance of love and kindness of faith and hope of compassion and nonviolence, retreating each other with respect and dignity, not as bodies to be climbed over on the road to material success. And I'm going to go back to you because I think this is really quite interesting that these that you pointed out that you know love and the young adult thriller you know it it, yeah. it pivots off of each other and, and and it's interesting that you talked earlier about the fact that it's a cultural really um uh like a cultural treaties really on the times when you yeah. see the movies of those times it's so interesting and i love that you indicate that today because you know these are opportunities and it goes back to this theme to have a notion of the smallest act of kindness because these people have to save each other they need each other or they're going to die (laughs) to literally die so what is your take on this whole concept um well i totally it's so funny i'm also i love how you can read comments here too not to take away from that but i love annie's comments about so i do know andrea bartz um i think i read her first book yeah we were never here um i like that i sound like her i'm not sure in what way or respect but i think she's a great writer so thank you for the compliment there you um, go 
I would say, I, I do think, obviously, I talk about this a lot, actually, in my writing. I do think that kindness and showing love is incredibly important. I think that we all, most of us, I think, I mean, I think all of us as writers, I can't speak for everyone, but everyone that I know, Meg, I know you're the same way as well. We, we write because there's not, you know, like we're super passionate about it. We can't imagine anything else. But I also think we have a world view and something that like a message we want to get out to the world. And one of mine has always been kindness and love. And in fact, um, both of it's, it's actually really interesting. That's our theme. Maybe not because you know me well, and I feel like maybe this is cosmic too, but like yeah. the theme in Ski Weekend really is about harmful stereotypes and showing love to all different people, whether, you know, they don't look like you, they don't have the same beliefs as you, same socio-political positions that you have. Um, the message behind this book really is, and it's like a fun, fast-paced survival. So you can- I'm going to stop you for a second. Look, I'm, yeah. I'm going to put the covers up there while you, so okay. you don't have to hold them up and okay. then we can talk about each book. So at okay. least people get, so Ski so, Weekend is yeah. her first novel. I want to, I'm going to speak to it for a second. It was named best book of the year by Cosmopolitan Entertainment Weekly, Yahoo, Life, Parade, Britain Company, Book Riot, and more. It's optioned for a major motion picture. So we're sending that manifesting juju out there for sure. Um, it is The Breakfast Club meets Lord of the Flies and this gripping tale of survival, impossible choices, and the harrowing balance between life and death that number one, New York Times bestselling author Kate, I'm sorry, Lauren Kate praises as a pace thriller with moments of great tenderness and spine chilling terror. So take it away, Liani. Tell us a little bit more about what was your. Well, why well, love? I mean, I love sticking with the theme of love and kindness and everything. And I really. People who read this book, I think, really get it um, because it was this was the most important part of the book for me to get out was really the theme of uh, we are all the same in certain ways. Mm -hmm. Once you take away what we look like, you know, our preconceived notions of each other, uh, prejudgments or whatever, we all love, you know, we all have fear. We all want to protect our families. We all, you know, for the most part, I think, yeah. want to do good. I yeah. think it's just unpacking all the other things that surround that. Um, maybe we're not so transparent. Maybe we have our, you know, shields up, our masks up or whatever. Ski Weekend was really the exploration of this group of kids in high school um, that all fit into a certain stereotype, just like you're familiar with, with the breakfast club or whatever, you know, the jock, the princess, um, the nerd, whatever, putting them in a situation where they're all stuck, stranded somewhere. Um, in the beginning, they think they don't have anything in common. They don't like each other. They don't want to like each other. They wouldn't normally ever get to know each other in a different situation. But in this situation, they're trapped together in the middle of the mountains, deserted in a blizzard, and they have to fight to stay alive. And will they be able to work together? What will they find out about each other? What will they see they might actually have in common in that type of, you know, live or die situation? And so the message of that book very clearly for me, and I hope people take that away, is it's really a message of love, uh, no, love for know. our fellow human being and yeah. really being open to discovering who each person is as an individual and not getting so bogged down with what they look like or, you know, outward appearances or what we may have heard from someone else that a person is like, but actually taking the time to get to know that individual. And then Summer Rental Thank also my. in a different way also has um, a very similar theme about this one is about toxic female friendships and bullying and really being kind to one another especially in the context of female relationships which i think most women uh have dealt with in some way shape or form i know that i dealt with it as a child well i guess i was a teenager as a teenager where i was kind of ostracized from my friend group and that was a incredibly hard situation to deal with. And at the time I thought, oh, there's something wrong with me. You know, why don't my best friends like me anymore? And I thought it was just me. I didn't know that like, this was such a thing that happens to almost every woman at some point in her life. Um, and then as I got older now, I'm a stepmom and I saw that happen again, the almost exact same situation happened to both of my step girls <laughs> at different points in their life, one in high school, one in college. It made me really realize like, hey, I, you know, when this happened to me, I wasn't alone. This mm -hmm. is a thing that happens to women over and over. Um, situations may be different, but similar things. There's something about women where like, we get in these situations with female friends where there's either jealousy or there's something, yeah. competition, something going on. 
And instead of talking it through and dealing with our emotions, we do these like little games where we like to do, you know, two on one or ostracize or, you know, m maybe there's not like a complete means or behind it, but it's happening all the time. And I wanted to write a book about that. I wanted to tell girls that are going through it or even, you know, women that you're not alone. There's nothing wrong with you. This isn't because that was the thing that I always thought when I was young, like there's something wrong with me. And it's really embarrassing. You don't want to talk to them because who wants to say, oh, you know, remember all those best friends I had? Yeah. That me? Um, yeah. Cause it's something you just don't talk about. It was a woman. Um, well, let, me, let me read the, let me read the byline. Well, let me, let me read the, so it's Mean Girls, yeah. like you said before, meet Scream in this heart pounding psychological thriller about a group of friends stranded on an island with a serial killer on the loose. Once again, you know, it's the love, like that we got to work together because we need each other and the serial yeah. killer. <laughs> and yeah. the serial killer. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And I then see we have Susan in the chat too. We have an amazing author friend, Susan. Oh, wait, Suzanne? Suzanne's got a yeah. book. Yeah. Suzanne's got a book that just came out too. Oh my God. So, and Annie, so Aunt, well, Annie McDon Annie's McDonald's awesome. author. She's an author too. So the both of them, they're here to join us. And it's awesome. We're definitely a circle of wonderful women authors today for yeah. sure. And then we have the last one, which popped out of nowhere. I don't know how you got to this one. And I was like, <laughs> what? What is happening? It's the pop star and the devil. Yeah. And a so bit this of this one was so fun to write. So I wanted to do, um, Ski, there's a ski weekend universe. It's four books. They're all thrillers. They all take place um, in different areas of the U.S. and they all take place during different seasons. Yeah. And I'm working on the third one now. It'll call it Spring Break, which is going to take place during Spring Break. But um, for a lot of reasons, it's not done yet, and it won't be done for months. And so I wanted to. Summer Rental was like, thank God, was really successful and was really amazing to see how that took off on TikTok. And I just met so many really wonderful readers. They kept asking, okay, I read this. Now I went back and read Ski Weekend. When's your next book? When's your next book? Yeah. And I was like, man, I'm going to lose momentum. Like I'm going to lose these readers yeah. if I don't put like something out. And so I started researching and I saw that short stories and novellas are really doing great right now. Everyone, it's I mean, it's insane. Now that like my eyes are open, everyone is doing them. Yeah. And I was like, why don't I just do a little like Halloween novella and see how it goes. It took longer than I thought. I thought it would be like a one week thing to do. Oh, boom, like, okay. week, so, week. <laughs> I know it took, I wrote it really fast, but then the editing and the cover and the, you know, the typography, all of that stuff took forever. Well, and I just want to say, I love your cover for all the Thank people you. in the podcast world. There's a butterfly right above the, is. yes, I'm it so is. happy to see that. And there's a bunch of like hearts and musical chords and stars and just it's black on gold, even the great color combo. Yeah, thank you. I love it. So it's Taylor Swift inspired. I, you know, I think like almost everyone has done in the last year. I always liked her. I mean, I grew up listening to her in my twenties. She was like my breakup song girl. But I really came out of the last year with just a really amazingly newfound respect for her, learning more about her, the music industry, really understanding her songwriting in the last few years and folklore, especially as a writer myself. Yeah. I have so I always thought she was a great, you know, writer and lyricist, but that album especially just really opened my eyes to how incredibly talented she is as a storyteller. Yeah. Um and I just love the way that she runs her business and everything. And I was like, you know what? I want to, I was really inspired by her. And I had this idea. I've had it for a long time um, about a deal with the devil story, like a Faustian bargain. I've always yeah. thought those stories, um, Portrait of Dorian Gray. Yeah. I've always loved stories like that, where someone makes a deal for whatever their dream is and what the repercussions might be and exploring that. And I thought I'd written this story a long time ago, but it was an actor uh oh. you know a female actor and i with the taylor swift thing i thought well it's so funny everyone people make a lot of jokes about taylor swift like did she make a deal with the devil because how did she you know skyrocket to this incredible i mean she's a billionaire now and it's like all of her enemies eventually are defeated somehow like <laughs> i love her and kanye west like they don't even they were so powerful and they're not even they're nothing now you know i yeah. was like it'd be kind of cool like people say you know maybe she did something i'm like well what if what if there was a pop singer? What if yeah. she did like 
make a deal with the devil to become the most famous pop star in the world what would that look like yeah. and like what might the deal be and what might she give up and then all these ideas just started snowballing and so i know funny. i know that you've had the same experience as a professional as an attorney so i was a lawyer for a really long time and women when we go into like a career world whether that's an attorney a businesswoman a pop star there's always something that we deal with that's mm -hmm. different than what men deal with yeah we, as women, we always like people judge us, you know, who are you, you know, what did you do to get to the top? Yeah. And then we have to make sacrifices that men don't have to make. Yeah. And so I also really wanted to explore it because she's had a lot of that in her life. And I've really related to that because now we're like, no one cared who I was dating as a trial attorney, but <laughs> so not like in that level, but in different levels, yeah. you know, um, I mean, I, I had some weird things that would happen to me that I know to not happen to men yeah um and so really exploring that like oh honey if we could talk what you said right there man what well, the story oh, is like you're just like wow that's just nuts that's just nuts. well there the, the audience is asking why your pen name rec talk ross so. yes i love that question it's such a good question so rec talk ross so ross is my mother's maiden name and she passed when I was in law school and she is, you know, probably the most formative person in my life mm -hmm. as far as getting me into reading and writing. She was a school teacher. And so I know that she would be so excited and so proud if she could see what I'm doing now, because that's what I think she always wanted me to do. Yeah. And so I really wanted to have like an homage to her in my name. Rec Talk is just Kotcher, which is my last name spelled backwards with like a letter flipped. And the reason why I have a pen name is because when I was Mm -hmm. um writing when i was writing ski we and also i wrote another book a long time ago um i was still practicing law and i was at like a very i love my firm like i'm still good friends with everyone there they've been incredibly supportive but it's a very big new york global law firm yeah. where super high-end clients that don't want their high-powered attorney also writing you know <laughs> ya romance or ya horror and so um, my firm was very generous letting me write and publish in whatever little free time that I had. Yeah. But the rule was, you know, you can't, you can't be, I think I can say that. I mean, wild. you can't be like a wild gotcha attorney yeah. and also be publishing these books. So I had to do it under a pen name. Yeah. Oh my God. No, I, and it's also the permission, right? Like I guess yeah. pending, you don't need the, perm but who knows that the clients will show up in the pages. Oh my God. So some are, I actually, it's really cool. A lot of my former clients, like now I'm public because I left my, I left a while, like four years yeah. ago. So now everyone knows who I am. And I, I actually have a lot of former clients who have been so supportive that are like, wow, it's so cool. You left the law, you know, yeah. and they're buying my books like for themselves, for their kids. It's really, really cool. Yeah, that's amazing. They're saying that, you know, so many lawyers have become right, which is absolutely because I'm have. a lawyer too. So there we go, the two of us. And, you know, the bottom line, you know, he said, I'm in New York too, in New York lawyer horse or horror authors. That's, she, that's awesome. So, you know, I think in the, in the end of the day, you know, all of these, you know, the best writers, I believe, write from what they know. If you're not writing from what you know, it's completely yeah. BS. It's like boring. It's like, it's yeah. because you feel that there's a separation. And I know that you write thriller. So, you know, not that you've gotten through, but I'm sure there's been, like you said, <laughs> very similar experience. I haven't killed anyone. I Nobody killed got killed. Anyone. Nobody got you know, but, but we have thought in our minds, I'm going to, I'm going to do something to this person in my book. I'm going to, like I said, beware, the pen is mightier yeah. than the sword. There's a reason yeah. why we've said that. So one of the things, you know, I love is getting your insights with regard to your inspiration. So clearly I had to get your three because I was like, okay, what inspirations would I possibly get on a Halloween? And these are awesome ones. And the first one we have is no one is going to pick you, pick yourself. Seth, Go and go on, go for it. Tell us what this means to you. Okay, well, I read his book and now I'm totally forgetting what it's called. It's like his super famous. It's like one word or whatever. Um, I'm gonna. Look I it read up. it because I always heard of him, but I had no idea who he was. Um, and there was this whole passage in it that I thought was so inspiring and so special, especially for where I was at that point in my life. I think it was like, I think I read it right after Ski Weekend went out, and Ski Weekend was such a labor of love and it's funny because like meg suzanne i think those are the three people on, at least on here we all came out with books the same year yeah. and 
it was like I don't know what we thought it was going to be like, but <laughs> yeah. I think we thought our book would come out. Everyone would fall in love with it. It'd be in bookstores and yeah. you know, whatever. It was not like that. Um, we had to like kick and scream and tight and like yeah. get, to try and get in anywhere. And I, um, I remember to try and like have bookstores carry it, libraries to get media. Everything was like such a battle. And there was so many no's and so many people saying like, I'm sorry, this isn't going to work for me, or, you know, we don't do debut authors, or we don't like your publisher. I mean, it was like everything you could possibly everything. think of, like every answer was a no. Um, and it was so great having these guys as like, you know, our friendship and everything motivating each other. But when I read this book and I read this quote, I was like, you know what, that's right. Like no one, I, I, I was sick of saying like, pick me, pick me, like mm -hmm. choose me, love me, you know, Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> like, please put my book in your bookstore please, you know, put me on your podcast, please interview. Me. I was so sick of that. Yeah. Um, that I realized I don't need anyone to pick me. Like I'm going to pick me, like I'm going to be my cheerleader and I'm going to go out and find the people that resonate with my book. And I don't need any of you negative people. Like, um, and I love that he talked about that. And I love that he said like, which I think we originally thought, but did not happen. No one's going to like come and discover you. You have to yeah. like believe in yourself. And you have to put yourself out there so people, you know, find you or whatever. Um, but you've got to be your biggest advocate and you've got to be the one that like, if you're going to make waves, like you're the one making those waves. It's yeah. not, you can't sit back and wait for someone else to come make those waves for you. And so I loved that. Um, it's actually on my phone still to this day, even though I will say like, I feel so much more confident. I'm really happy with the path that I've chosen now, especially I was so nervous to self-publish summer rental and it has been such an amazing experience um i'm not i'm not waiting anymore for for people to open the doors like i'm opening the doors and i know that the three of us yeah and maybe yeah. the other ladies maybe annie too or maybe kelly also feel the same way mm -hmm. but i'm sick of i'm sick of, of of the you know the gatekeepers or whatever like yeah we don't need those people anymore we can get yeah. to our readers and find the people that embrace us and love us and like what we're doing well, Suzanne's saying, bring it with fire signs, which is really what it is all about. Bring it with fire signs. Because I love you know, that. But you know, it's interesting because I have to say this, because every author cohort, and I'm happy to say that I have mine, you know, they find each other at the beginnings. And then yeah. when they rise to the top, which we will, and we are, you know, we, we, we look around and it's, we know each other not because, you know, we've latched on to anyone else's star, but we've watched each other like, climb the ladder or whatever spiral ladder right. it is. So it's even more profound and awesome, you know, as we see each other just shine really. And that would, oh, there's one more thing. And we have our own little joke. We have the pretty woman scene when she comes back with her bags and she goes, big mistake, huge. huge. <laughs> I love that. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. And I thought this quote is perfect. Yeah, I love it. And then this is the next one. Monsters are real and ghosts are real too. They live inside of inside us and sometimes they win. Stephen King, talk to us, girl. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say this is an inspirational or a loving quote, but I did have to throw something in for Halloween. Yes. So it it's one of my favorite um like horror quotes. Obviously, I love Stephen King. I think everyone or almost everyone in the genre that likes horror, or even if you don't like horror, because he writes amazing things that are not horror, I think everyone at least respects, if not loves him. Um, so of course, a quote from him during Halloween. Yes. But what I really love about this, and this is how I feel about horror as well, um, I think that horror allows us to explore the darkness, either in ourselves or in society, um, and do it in a really interesting way, in a way that is not so obvious as it could, you know, if you're writing nonfiction or something about horrible things that happened in World War II or, um, you know, just awful things that you see in society, suicide or whatever, it's much more, I think it's harder to take. It's mm. in your face. It's more visceral. Um, yeah. A lot of people don't want to read something so dark in that way. But I think when you put it in horror and it's fun like this and people are running around and yeah. there's jokes and you know, same with scream. Um, <laughs> it's more palatable. It's more, it's more fun. It's more entertaining. It's more escapism. Yeah. But you're also learning something and it's kind of like a little hidden, a hidden learning and you take away and you think about it and you ruminate on it. And I love that. I think it's, 
I think it's more impactful, honestly, to do it in that way than to do it so in your face. Um, but that's why I thought this quote was really cool. I don't, at least in my books, where it says sometimes they win, they don't win in my books. <laughs> my book's good is always going to win over evil, unless a short story is a little bit different. So I don't want to like say that forever. Short stories, I think you play around a little bit more, but in my novels, 100% like, I'm a positive person and that's the message I want to leave. Good is going to win out over evil. Stephen King's a little darker than me. Um, <laughs> but I just, I thought this quote was like perfect for Halloween. And I think it's perfect for the horror genre in general. That I just really, I love how it explores like the dark side of things. Well, I mean, it's so, pro like you said, I think it's so, it's so appropriate to what really is going on in the world. However, mm -hmm. there's a, a provided escapism, like you talk about where, you know, okay, <laughs> the, the, to the extreme, yeah. but sometimes when you put it out like that, then it makes you truly think about your life and the world as it is. I love that. They somewhat, I think there was a quote that said, the best books are the ones when you close the door, like close the last page and the conversations begin. And there's some major conversations that come from thriller with summer rental, with, yeah. with your, with ski weekend. There's some conversation because it all talks about fan. Uh, it talks about interreaction, interconnectedness, I think. So I think that's yeah. really profound. And this is your last one. <laughs> if you aren't in the arena, also getting your ass kicked. I'm not interested in your feedback. If I had a mic, I'd drop it. Talk to us. <laughs> this is awesome. I love, okay, so this is love. another one. So I never, Renee around like, I'm not, I, I do like to read inspirational books, but I'm not like a huge, like, rah, rah, let's read like every, you know, motivational book in the world. But so I, I hadn't read Brene Brown before, but I always heard of her. And I'm like, I think she was in a movie, like, these girls go on a girl's trip and Brene Brown's there. I forget what the movie is called. They're like on a wine trip or something. And I remember oh, watching, yes. like, who's Brene Brown? Like, I had no clue. Um, but then I I'd always heard people talking about her. Like, I'm in all these female entrepreneurship groups. And so eventually curiosity got the best of me. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to just read this Brene Brown. And again, I forget because she's got so many. Um, she's got so many books. I forget the title, but you guys can Google which one this comes from. But it's from one of her books and I really loved it. And it's like this whole, this is just a short piece of it. It's like this whole long passage. It's basically, I think it's called like get in the arena or being in the arena or whatever. And I like, I get chills because I think it's yeah. so profound, but it's, I mean, basically the idea is if you're actually in the ground and you're fighting, you're like the gladiator fighting, which I think all of us are as creatives and businesswomen or whatever, that the people that are in the grandstands that aren't doing shit exactly. with their lives that have an opinion and all the trolls that want to say, oh, I didn't like her books or nah, 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 I don't like her first, whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. who cares? If you're not there on the ground, if you're not fighting like we are to make our dreams come true, Amen. Like your opinion is not interesting at all to me. And it yeah. took me a long time to get there. And I still look, I'm a sensitive person. I still, when I stumble across negative reviews, of course, it hurts my feelings and when I get upset or whatever, but then I think of this quote and I take a step back and I'm like, who are those people? Yeah. Like, what are they doing with their lives? Like, yeah, their nasty judgment or mean words of me. Like it's their opinion. And there's another quote. It's like, your opinion of me is not a concern of mine or not interested in or whatever. That's like, I started to come to terms with that. That's how I plan to live the rest of my, you know, business life, artist life and career is like, if you're not on the ground with me, if you're not someone that I respect, that's, doing the same, you know, something similar, fighting for your dreams, whatever, running your business um, nice. with some kind of a kind criticism, then I really don't care. And I don't need to care. And I'm going to just keep doing me. And you can stand up there, you know, throwing whatever uh, potatoes or apples or whatever people throw, <laughs> <laughs> like in the grandstands, but like, I'm not, I'm not going to accept anymore well you're getting a lot of high five yes queens out there nails it you know all of the above i you know i will i will you tag you with this it's absolutely it's like if you're not doing it and sweating it and crying it and everything like we is, are then i don't want to hear it you know i and it's you know it's a really beautiful thing because people it's, it's the kind of the ballerina image you know they oh. admire the ballerina and her glory but they don't see the gnarled toes like literally oh, you have to feel the pain to toward the dream to move like move it all you know even despite the naysayers and everything 
Amen. I love what you said. I'm inspired. This is what I was always looking for. So, you know, kudos to you. And, I know. Yeah. I mean, I know you so well. I knew that like yeah. <laughs> it hard to put my absolute, I'm in the middle ones, like, you know, horror talking point, but the bookends are my two of my most favorite inspirational quotes that get me fired up when I'm feeling down. And I knew because we're so similar in a lot of ways, yeah. I knew that you would you would also like them if you hadn't already heard them. Love, yeah. love, love, love them. And you know, and, and you know, the interesting thing, I think one of the one of the things that I always look for on these interviews is kind of how are you doing and where are you in your journey right now? And I I I will you know, I will, you know, you know, come off of that that comment or that quote as well, because clearly three books out now in as many as the year, less than three years for sure. Um, yeah. You have such a bright future ahead of you, you know, and it's all about manifesting the whole vision and holding it to yourself and right, right. do it. So tell me, where are you? I mean, I feel great. I feel like, I mean, I hope all of us do. I mean, I feel like we're just in a different stage of our life where there was so much, and I don't want to like sugarcoat this. I mean, you know, like you were in it with me in the beginning. I mean, there was so much insecurity and and desperation and like like dreaming of, well, will someone notice me? Will I get an agent? Will I get a manager? Will like my books be in Target? And it was like, it was so much and so much rejection and so much heaviness. Um, and it's the complete opposite for me now. I honestly, like, I think part of that is doing self-publishing for, summer rental and then for the pop star like i finally feel like i'm in control i feel like i'm finding my readers i feel like i'm connecting with my community and maybe not everyone's gonna love my books and that's fine but i feel like i'm finally meeting the people that do love my books and are championing my books and i'm championing them right back and trying to love on them also and really build a community um and i feel like the i really do genuinely feel like it's limitless right now. Like I'm so revved up. I'm so excited. I've stopped caring yeah. about the industry. I've stopped caring about the gatekeepers. I've stopped caring about all the bullshit. And really I care about my readers. Like that's what I care about. I care about writing books that are fun and stay true to who I am and my brand and have a great message and something that I, I have so many things. I mean, I'm like, I'm older. Like I have so many things that I want to share with the world i yeah. hope and think are positive messages and that's what i care about i care about getting that out i care about impacting people's lives i care about finding community and supporting them and finding my readers and my people and like that's what i care about i don't care about any of the other bullshit. i don't care about the agent i don't care about the manager i don't care about someone accepting me you know i'm gonna make i thank god i do have amazing producers attached to ski weekend and they think they're like interested in summer rental too but God forbid if they're not, you know what? I'm. It's going to happen. Like, I'm going to do it myself. So yeah. I think really kind of like the Seth Gooden quote, like forgetting worrying about who is on my team and who's going to find me. And like, I don't need that. Like, I'm it. doing it. And I feel such confidence and I feel so relaxed. I don't know. Like, I'm, I feel like I'm in a great place. And a lot of that was just getting rid of all of these crazy ideas and expectations of, acceptance yeah by anyone else other than the readers do matter but anyone else really doesn't yeah in my opinion well i think everything that you said is beautiful and Le and suzanne is like you know high-fiving you on the right <laughs> so, you, so made you, made yeah, you made it but you know the interesting thing i have to say and i think it comes from really who you are that you've already stayed authentic to who you are is your generosity of spirit seriously you aren't good and i and, and it's funny because you know like you're saying i don't need anybody but we need each other literally yeah. to say keep yes. going honey do it do it we see you but you find your people like you said that's really important because you don't want to be in the wrong room with the wrong people who literally you don't know if they're trying to use you to get themselves further. And you're just like, wait a second, what happened? You know, but the reality is, you know, you are seriously manifesting this beautiful dream of yours. So let me ask you this. What are some of the tools that you like to use to keep yourself going that keep inspiring yourself? You do have a book club. Yeah. Right? yeah. No, and I love, I love that you corrected me because when I mean like I don't need anybody, I mean like those gatekeepers. No, no. I love that you corrected me because you know me like community. Yes, like 
community is so, and not just the readers, but like other authors, your family, your friends that truly support you and really believe that I need. I mean, that I definitely need. And that's- I want to point out the fact that you're speaking toward the gatekeepers. No, it's the yes, gatekeepers. The Those gatekeepers. people who have like literally Those given the themselves. Yeah, you know, they've given I, themselves the title of gatekeeper. Why? I definitely it, need community. <laughs> those people, like all everyone on this right now, yeah. the Fab Five, which is our writing group, like those people. Yes, all the positive people. I do need that. Um. So you asked me what keeps me going, or what keeps me so, like what what gets you like keeps you on that track toward manifesting your dreams. What are the tools yeah. that you use that push you on? But I want to yeah. say we are definitely going to be on the stage one day. Indie authors become the story. Mark my words, it's going to yes. happen. It just hasn't found a home yet. Oprah, so Oprah. I mean, let's just manifest it. Let's just do it. Yeah, you know me. I'm not. I'm not a small time, you know, dreamer. So yeah, I think you know. So I work with. A coach, Hillary De Caesar, who also happens to be Amazing. my husband's ex-wife, which is very interesting. And people are like, what is going on? But we've become really good friends through raising my three stepchildren. And she's an amazing, wonderful, incredible woman, a stellar businesswoman. And so I do touch in with her. Like we worked really, really closely together when I first was leaving my job uh, as a lawyer to transition to a writer. I like we were super intense. And now we kind of meet every you know kind of whenever i'm like at a standstill but but every couple of weeks or months or whatever we'll we'll touch base and she'll kind of push me to the next level my husband also is really amazing at that so he's been like a tech executive for many many years and even though he's not a writer it's really incredible like the stuff that um applies to both like because it is a business being a writer is a business so his kind of business ideas and concepts applying that to what i'm doing as a writer so I'll touch base with him. I think you guys as well, um, like we call ourselves a Fab Five. We're like a writing support group. I think having you guys kind of um, to really like motivate and talk about ideas and really inspire and push to the next level. Um, so definitely community, definitely your support system um, and definitely some kind of coaching. And I know Meg, you're an amazing coach as well. I think like having books like yours to kind of open and reflect on and just sometimes I'll like, pull out magical guide and kind of like find a little paragraph and makes also really great about in our group chat about sending little like paragraphs <laughs> and portions from her book, like to kind of push us and motivate us. So I think all of that, um, and then podcasts, oh, yeah. I love, 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 um, podcasts like this, where I'm listening to other authors and kind of hearing how they get to the next level. Um, so I'm, I'm constantly always learning. I love to learn and really just, um, I think surrounding myself with other people doing inspiring things. Well, you know, we go back to the intentional part of the show where we all talk about like what our t intention is for today yeah. and maybe for your future. And what, what was your intention for this interview today, Liani? I think my intention for today's interview was to inspire and also to scare maybe with it maybe with a stephen king quote um oh. but definitely to inspire and to be inspired also yeah. which i always am whenever i talk with you and the, in the chat as well i love all the comments in the chat you guys are awesome that also inspires me every time i see like positive happy people yeah um, what number would you pick then from the magical guy between three and like 397 21 21. Okay. So 21, that speaks to your um, inspirational intention today is, okay, hold on to your dreams. It is Apollo Coelho, which I do love. When a person really desires something, all the universe conspires to help that person realize his dream. And it starts wow. mapping out your hero's journey on the road to your, realize your dream today. I, I love mean, it. And that is perfect. It's perfect. And you know, one of the, so one of the other things I would love for you to share, and I think this has to do with um, the author world that you've discovered with yeah. writing your books. And also because you're now, you're now looking at movies and produ right. production around that. I mean, what was the biggest lesson that you've learned in these last years that could help maybe catapult someone else's dreams along? I mean, I feel like I've kind of talked about it and it's sort of like the theme of my life, but really just like believe in yourself. Yeah. Um, you have to be your own biggest cheerleader. I so firmly believe that, that 
Well, yeah, we can have help. I mean, you can have, I mean, I have a publicist who I think is amazing and he's been really great. And we have our, you know, found I, I have my husband or whatever, but like, really, if you're going to be an artist, I think, or a businesswoman or whatever, it really boils down to believing in yourself, always getting back to that. Um, and really being your biggest champion and just not letting anyone tell you no to your dreams. I've been told no, like I can't even, I mean, I probably have like 300 rejections. I mean, even it like makes me laugh at this point, even like <laughs> summer rental, I had so many and it was like a bestseller and I've had, I mean, not everyone loves it, but enough people do that. I'm like, okay, these people don't even like, they don't know what they're talking about. You yeah. know what they're talking about. You know what you believe in. You just got to keep going after it. And eventually, especially with books, you're going to find your audience. You're going to find your community. It's not going to be for everyone, but the people that it's going to be for are really going to love it. And that's who you're looking for. That's who you're working for. It's beautiful. Believing in yourself certainly just takes that, it releases all that negative, you know, anybody else's toxic drama off your shoulders. And you're like, okay, I know who I am. I know where I'm going. And this is all going to be, like you said before, pick yourself, that mentality. Okay. So wait, now wait, can I say one thing, sorry, because we're still the inspiring thing. So yeah. like this also, I just want to, because I think this like solidifies it for me and hopefully it will for anyone else listening. So I'm going to um, stop you for a second. I'm going to say, what is your final inspiration today? Yeah, okay. Okay. My <laughs> so I'm going to bring it back to Taylor Swift. Oh, hey, hey Taylor now. Taylor Swift. Um, and Girl. people, I, I heard this or someone said this or whatever, but it was sometimes I think of Taylor Swift and how successful she is. And all I think about is like, she's not a superhero. She didn't make a deal with the devil or whatever. She's just an ordinary person who is talented, who never gave up on herself. Uh, that literally, like you look at it and you're like, wow, she's a billionaire. Da, da, da. She, I mean, she's been doing this for like 15 years, 20 years. And how much, if you looked at her, her career trajectory, there are so many times yeah. in her life where she could have stopped and given up based on what everyone else in society was telling her, you know, hurdles she was going through. I mean, dozens and dozens and dozens. I mean, even the Kanye West thing, she could have given up, but she just, she never gave up on herself. Never she gave never up. gave up on her dream. And that's why she is where she is today. And so I think that for me, that's like a great final thing. And that's, I always think of that myself too. I absolutely love that. And I think that one of the things that you literally, anybody who comes up to you and I, I love, I have to say this, this memory I'll never forget when we were at the LA book fair and one of your fans came up oh, and was like, cute. like fangirling you. And I was just like, this is what it's all about. Like you really touched somebody with your writing. You really like made someone excited about reading. That is exciting to that me. That was like you... a core memory. That was one of the most special things. Uh, it, it, I shared, you remember, I like saw this I know happening. you were so, so cute. I know it you was, were excited too. No, no. I was like, oh my God, they're like totally waiting for you. Go, go talk to them. Go talk to them. No, for sure. You know, I, I, I want to say this, you know, what's next for you and where can we find you? Because there's so many you know, books you have out there. I'm saying once again, pop star and the devil, we have summer rental and we have ski weekend. So where can we find you, Liani? Yeah. So I'm everyone on social media at rep talk Ross, R E K T O K R O S S. That's my pen name. Um, I genuinely love to connect with people. So if you have any questions, if I can support you, if there's anything I can do for you, definitely reach out to me, DM email. You'll find my email everywhere. Also, my website, www.rectalkrouse.com. I do have a book club, which you talked yeah. about earlier. It's the face, uh, it's on Facebook. It's the book nook by Rec Talk Ross. It's, it's like just for readers. I mean, it's not even really all about me or anything. It's not like a Rec Talk Ross fan group. It's really, um, I want to start a group to really get people reading again and get me I reading different genres. We read a different style book, different style author every month. So you can find me there. Um, but really, I just, I, like I said, I love building communities. So if you like thriller or horror, you just like meeting other nice authors or whatever, definitely find me, follow me. DM and are you going to be anywhere in, in real life anytime soon? You know, I just got back from Y by the Bay. Um, yeah. And that was unbelievable. I got to speak with R.L. Stein, which was like a dream come true, but I, I'm not, I don't think, other than I might go to Thriller, the Thriller conference in New York over the summer. And I think I'm going to go to 20 books to 50K or whatever, because that's yeah. here in Vegas. 
but I'm for that. I'm not going as like a author or anything. I'm going to actually learn yeah. marketing and I'll share it with all you guys later, but yes, that's um, awesome. I'm going to try and learn more on Facebook ads and Amazon ads and stuff. Okay. Like I said, I'm always learning, but for me personally speaking, I think that's probably it. Maybe Comic Con. I've done that every year. Okay, so now before we leave on this beautiful Halloween, give us something Halloweenish. <laughs> Halloweenish. Something Halloweenish. I don't know if that's a word. I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. Give us something uh, that. Okay, perhaps you know one of the moments in one of your favorite horror films that you know just like you just want to share with us. Then we have this to go look really, at. This is really putting me on the spot. I'm Sorry. Not, <laughs> there's I'm so like, many. Who knows? Talk many. about inspiration. I'm not sure if there's like any horror quotes. Um. <laughs> What's a good horror? I don't know. I can't think of any. Okay. Well, um, okay. I'll, you know what? It's not a horror quote, but I'll tell you, uh, I'll, I'll do my, my screen movies. Okay. 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 Yeah. So I think if you're going to, cause I'm like a big fan of watching horror movies, um, especially on Halloween, I would do scream one, which is the absolute very, very, very best. I would do scream four which crazy enough, even though it's like so far down in the franchise before it got rebooted recently, I think it was actually brilliant. And I love Emma Roberts in it. And then I would probably do the new uh, Scream. I They call it Scream, but it's really Scream 5. I would watch those three. Okay. A hundred percent. I know that's not a quote, but there's a lot of really good quotes in that. Okay. That you can watch and learn the rules of horror, but that's what I would do. Well, that's good. I that think that would be my Halloween takeaway. If we're going to do anything today other than trick or treat, I would watch a scary movie. Oh, there you go. So that is from the, the mouths of wonderful Rectoct Ross, AKA Liani Kotcher, and the whole world of thriller slash scream slash terrifying movies, which I have to tell you, I was laughing because I was afraid to read your first book because I was like, Liani, I cannot. <laughs> I cannot. I cannot. And you're like, okay, it was, it was very good. You're going to, it's very suspenseful. It is. Thank it talks you. about relationships. So I am real big advocate and proponent and fan of Rec Doc Ross as well. So go I'm out there her. And, and grab, grab her books and learn as much you, as you can and follow her. And, you know, there's going to be so many more books coming our way. I know it. I just like, my head was spinning, but I'm so proud of you. And you're so amazing. And you really are a bright light. And, and, and I, I will say this, one of the things that, you know, I like is those extraordinary people who are doing their things to encourage others that they don't have to ask for permission. No more begging, yeah. just step into your greatness and go for it. So final word goes to you, Liani. Happy Halloween. Is, is that a good one word? That's the best one. Anyway, Don't everybody. Killed. Don't get killed, kids. Don't get killed, kids. So everybody remember, you know, we are here as deliberate creators of our lives. Dream big. Be inspired and get ready to manifest your dreams. Wishing you bliss. Don't do anything that we wouldn't do, right? Famous last words. And Nani, thank you so much. This was wonderful. I enjoyed every minute of it. You're the man. You're thank amazing. You I love it. All right. You're amazing. Happy Halloween. Halloween. Bye, everybody.